He gives it a voice. He gives it a mouth. Well, that's really, really interesting. So, in Genesis, in, in Genesis, this is a this is a very, very, very complex idea, and it, it took people thousands of years to figure this idea out. And it's something like this. So, at the beginning of everything, there was chaos, and that was like potential. It was something like potential, the potential for being, and. God, who's God the Father in the Genesis account, uses a faculty that he has, which is the Word, to call being from chaos. And that's the creation of being, right? It's the, it's the manifestation of order from chaos. And it's the Word, the Logos, that it's, it's the Logos that's the tool that God uses to do that. And that Logos in Christianity is associated with Christ, which is a very weird thing. And, but the reason for that is that there's an idea that the divine element of the individual is the thing that uses language, communicative language, to call the world into being. And that is what we do, as far as we can tell, it's like you make a decision, you think it through, you talk it over with your friends, you plot a course, and the world manifests itself in relationship to your choice. And it's for that reason and it is for that reason that in Genesis and in many other accounts that that Logos capacity is identified with human beings it's like you have a small bit of that in you, whatever that means and you participate in the process of continually generating order out of chaos and, and sometimes the reverse, you mediate between them and so, and that, that in, our, in, in, in Western culture, and, and it's certainly the case in other cultures as well that that's why you have rights Fundamentally, that's why the law has to respect you, is because you've got this spark of divinity in you that's transcendent, that nobody gets to transgress against and you say, well, do you believe that? It's like, well, you act like you believe it you treat other people like you believe it, or they're not very happy with you so, it depends on what you mean by believe, you act it out, well, do you accept it as a proposition? Well, I don't care if you accept it as a proposition, frankly, because I think the best indicator of what you believe is how you act, not what you say because what do you know about what you know? hardly anything and so, actions speak louder than words and if you want to be treated properly by someone, what that means is that you want to treat them you want them to treat you as a valuable, autonomous entity that's what you want and so, maybe you're not that, maybe you're a deterministic puppet and what this strange movie suggests is that you are kind of a deterministic puppet, but that you don't have to be alright, well, you, the mouth goes on and then Geppetto's happy about that, and then they have a little dance, you know, they, they turn the music on and all these little music boxes, and they all play together and it's like harmony of some sort has been established, because that's what the music represents and the, there's layers of reality that are communicating with one another, because that's what the music represents, and then they have a little dance and the idea is that, well, it's a good thing to let this puppet have its own voice well, that's an interesting idea, because what the hell does it know? it's a wooden-headed marionette, why the hell would you want something like that to talk? well, it's the same question you have in relationship to your children it's like, what do they know? they're two, or three, you know, they don't know anything well, so should you just, like tyrannize them and make them do everything you want, or are you going to let them have a bit of a voice? and the question is, it depends on whether we want them to be a puppet or not and if you don't want them to be a puppet, if you want them to grow up autonomous, then you let them have a voice and you facilitate the development of that voice and so, and, 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 that's, and that's what you do if you don't want a marionette so, and Geppetto doesn't want a marionette, so he gives the puppet a voice, even though he knows it's just a puppet and that it's, it doesn't know anything 